with three years experience of it, uh, and so on and so on, and they end up eventually with people that are right for the skills. So they're right for the dry list of skills we need. And then they recruit them, and what they find out later is that these people don't have the right attitude. They don't have the right culture. And so the number one important thing to remember is that you can teach people skills, you usually cannot change people's attitude. And if somebody's not a good member of your team, if somebody doesn't have the right culture or the right behavior to be a good member of your team, then the chance of this changing over time is close to zero. Now, I do not say to take the cleaner and get them to do your server programming. Okay, that doesn't work. So there needs to be some skills. Between, between people that have the right attitude, it's fine to take those that have less skills because they're going to learn. And when they learn, they're going to be much more contributing partners than any other that you took just because of the skill. You need to build a team rather than just get a group of great individuals. Many of the companies that I see, they end up recruiting a team of people that are great, each one on their own, but they just don't work well together. You know, you can ideally get, you see a group of people that are all like, you know, alpha dogs, each one of them just wants to take the lead. They fight all the time, they're all great. Each one of them could have been a huge success in a different company, but sitting together doesn't work. So you need to make sure that you're creating a team rather than just hiring great people. And then on top of it, don't be afraid to hire different people. Some of the best teams in the world <laughs> have people that are different. What can different mean? Somebody who's older, somebody who's not an engineer originally, somebody who comes from another domain and basically changes career. These people are the ones that are going to be the most loyal to the company, they're the ones that are going to contribute the most, and they're the ones that are going to bring the different solution, the different point of view that may eventually be the one thing that's going to make your company more successful. So finding your stars and making sure that whether you're a manager, then in your team, or if you're a startup guy, then you're peers, making sure that you're surrounded with people like that. That is critical. And then when you bring them, it's incredibly difficult to keep them. Why? Because these people are wanted by everybody. So how do you keep them? The first thing you care. You really, 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 really need to care about them. And when I say care, the, the biggest mistake you can do if you have an employee like that is to basically let them burn out. What does it mean to let them burn out? Because these are the people that do more. When there's a task and everybody goes home, they're the ones that continue. When there's a problem, there's a big thing to do. Eventually, they're the ones that work harder than anybody else. You need to stop them. You need to listen to them, you need to care about them, because the last thing you want is to take somebody that good and let them burn out until the point that they can't continue. You need to give them positive feedback, because everybody wants to get feedback. Even if they're great, you want to get positive feedback, and you need to give them great compensation for results, because at the end of the day, that's one of the reasons why we work. You need to empower them. Empowering them meaning that if you bring somebody so good to work for you, or to work with you, then micromanaging them, telling them exactly what to do, and not letting them work is going to be a big mistake. If you want to find somebody that you're going to micromanage, you can take somebody, somebody average, because you're going to do the job anyhow, you're just going to tell them what to do. If you're taking somebody really strong, let them work, empower them. You need to listen to them. Everybody wants to be heard. Everybody wants their opinion to count. You need to ensure that everybody knows the strategy. This is really a, an interesting one. At the beginning of the uh, summer, at the, at the, at the, I think it was at the 1930, when manufacturing became a big thing in the United States, and you know, most people had a job that made, mainly meant something like you know, sending and doing that in a machine. They did a very interesting uh, study. They said, let's see what's the difference between people that know why they're doing that and the people that don't know. And so they took, at the time it was uh, manufacturing of a machine, and there was a position where people were basically making some kind of wedge, some kind of piece of metal that went into the machine. And then they took half of these, they measured the productivity of these people, and they took half of them and just let them continue. And they took the other half, and they took them to a tour of the entire production line, all the way to the end machine, and they show them where the wedge was actually sitting in the final thing that, the, that the, they were building. Meaning that they could see suddenly why they're doing that. 
how is this connected to the final product? And the people that knew had growth, growth of productivity of more than 50% in the coming year. And the reason is very simple. How difficult is it to work when you don't know why you're doing it? When you don't know what part are you playing in the big strategy? And so make sure that they know what part they're playing. Make sure that they know why they're important. Make sure that they know why there's a small role, how it fits into the bigger picture of everything that happens.